hey, good morning. We just want to say welcome to everybody uh, that's here with us today, and especially all of you who are visiting us online. Uh, we are so glad that you are joining us this morning. We have uh, an incredible, I think, service plan for people today. What do you think, Kyra? Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. Um, today, we are continuing our series called Christmas Interrupted, and things are going to be a little different. We have a guest speaker. That's Mr. Right. Michael Tucker will be bringing us to service, yeah. and our <laughs> Upstreet team will be singing for us. Yeah, so this morning is going to be a little bit different as the whole Upstreet crew really is, is joining in to help us uh, with worship today and with the message. And then also we have special music uh, from Dinah Rooks, and you're going to hear uh, communion devotion from Mickey Rooks. And uh, so a lot of things going on. We're excited about it and um, can't wait to, to see what's going to happen. Um, Speaking of, you know, things that are going on here at DCC, uh, there's a lot of ways for you to get plugged in. And one of those ways we tell you every single week is to download our app. And on the app, you're going to find access to previous messages, uh, a giving platform, as well as announcements and events, all sorts of ways that you can uh, get plugged in and interact, get connected with uh, DCC here. And in fact, as we're talking about giving, um, we can actually give here in person too. It's a little bit different than what we're doing in the past. Yeah, over whenever you exit church or if you came in already, you can go ahead in our offering boxes or by our doors and just go ahead and drop your offering by. And if you did not get communion whenever you walked in, just raise your hand and Miss Ashley over there will come bring it to you. Yeah, absolutely. So easy things going on. If you have any questions or anything after the service, especially after what you hear from Mr. Michael this morning or uh, anything pertaining to our service and, and, or our church and you would like to have some answers to those questions, we would love to speak with you after. And in fact, uh, whatever the next step may be for you, uh, we would like to help you take that next step. And uh, we're going to be with you every step of the way. And for those of you online, just know that uh, I know that you may not be here with us, but we are still here for you. And I would love to hear from you and from your family. And we're wishing you a very, very Merry Christmas from here at DCC. And uh, would, would love for you to join us next week as we celebrate Christmas together here in the community center. Yes. Yeah, well, with all that being said, I'll let Kyra pray and we'll begin with today's service. All right, please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day for all of us to come together and hear this wonderful message that Michael will bring us. We love you and thank you for just keeping every single one of us safe to get here. And please watch over everybody, even as they're not here, just over this really tough time, dear Lord. We love you and thank you for all the blessings you have given us. Please keep us just always locked into you and help this message sink into the Lord. Please help the lost ones and all the unspoken requests for us today. We love you and thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand and get started with worship. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Clay. <laughs> I need you guys to stand up on your feet because we are doing up street worship, which is upbeat and uplifting and means you need to be up. So <laughs> we're going to do some up street worship. This is a song that the kiddos should know. I'm looking for my kiddos out there to dance with us. So go ahead and let's put on our we're first gonna one. Dance, lift our hands, celebrate it's Christmas. Light up the world, Jesus is born. Everybody sing with us, yeah. 
your encouragement during that. I know there was a lot of stuff maybe you older folk, yes, I said old, may not feel like you can do, but this one is joy to the world. You guys know this, but it's got a little kick to it, and all we're going to do is be raising our hands and stuff so y'all can do it, okay? Okay? Woo! Okay. <laughs> we... All right, and we're going to put our hands together for this one, too. Y'all can do that.
you guys got a little glimpse of what we do with the kiddos. You're breathing really hard. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope you guys had fun. We hope you guys have some joy this Christmas. A little bit more joy this Christmas. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we ask that you just take this offering, Lord, and use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to always be found doing your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, Matt had asked me and Dinah about singing a song, and I was all excited. You know, I was going to sing something like, It came upon the midnight clear. But Derek, he pulled me aside this morning. And he said, Mick, you know I love you like a migraine headache. But he said, I've heard you sing. And he said, all the church needs from you is a silent night. So I'm just going to read a little bit. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now Dinah's going to sing for y'all. <laughs> We're looking for the king, the new messiah. We're following star shining brighter old man won't you help us if you can he shook his head but he pointed his hand there's a new kid in town
Welcome, everybody, to Dumble Christian Church. My name is Mr. Michael. I'm the Upstreet Director here at DCC. And you guys are probably wondering, who in the world is this gentleman on stage talking to you right now? It's because I'm usually on this side of the stage with your kids having fun playing games and just being crazy like my wife, Miss Taylor. So uh, how did they do, by the way? They did an amazing job, didn't they? Man, so far this morning, it's been amazing. I really enjoyed it. And so today, guys, we're continuing our series of Christmas Interrupted. And this year, if you know anything like I do, this year has been a year of interruptions, right? If we could say there was one year in all of my life, and probably yours as well, that there was so many interruptions, it would be what? Probably 2020, right? I think there's a lot of people joking there's going to be a phrase like, hey, did you have a 2020 day or you know, things like that? It's just because this year seems like there was so much thrown at us and, you know, it just seems like it's never going to end. But you know, we wanted this series to be, hey, how are you using those interruptions in your life? How are you using those? And, you know, what's coming about from them? So thank you for joining us. Um, if you've been here over the past few weeks, you know, we've talked about a lot. And to be honest, some of these stories are my favorite. But the first one we can go back is we talked about the story of Mary and Joseph, right? How Mary and Joseph, they were given the biggest invitation ever, right? So we talked about how God's interruptions, to them it was an interruption, but it was an invitation, Right? It was an invitation for them to step into something greater than themselves. Right? you got to imagine as an uh, you know, engaged couple, you know, not married yet, and then someone coming and telling you, you're going to have a baby. Right? And they're just like, what? Hold up. Wait a minute. That's in a video somewhere. I don't even know. But it's just like, what? There's, I'm going to have a baby? Like, this is a big interruption in my life. And the angel told him, this is not an interruption. This is an invitation for you to take part in something so much bigger than yourself. And so as we go on, you know, this season and as we end 2020, are we looking at our interruptions as invitations? Are we looking at them as something bigger than what they actually are? Last week, we jumped into the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, right? How they were an older couple, probably in their later, later 60s, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. And, you know, they couldn't have a baby. They couldn't have a baby. So for them, this was a time of sorrow. This was a time of shame in their culture because they couldn't, you know, partake in what was known as something that, it was a must. And for them, you know, this interruption wasn't necessarily an invitation, but this interruption of the angel saying, hey, you're going to have a baby. His name's going to be John the Baptist, and he's going to pave the way for the king, the Messiah, Jesus. This, was, for them, was not just an invitation. This was a blessing. And we learned last week that God's interruptions oftentimes are blessings, even when we don't think so. Even when we feel like the world's crashing down around us, even when we feel like things are just falling apart. God often turns those interruptions, those times of chaos into blessings, right? Who could say, what, man, 2020, a blessing? But are we finding that joy? Are we turning our perspective to something greater than ourselves? Because you're going to find today, we're going to be talking about a story about two uh, different people, right? And kids, you've probably heard this story before as well. We're going to be talking about King Herod and the wise men. And both of these groups of people, King Herod and the wise men, they both had interruptions in their life, but how they reacted to these interruptions were different. And so as you guys are sitting here today, if you're watching online, thank you for being here, first off. But if you're watching online and you're, or you're here in person, I just want you to take a second and compare yourselves. Compare your heart and your mind to these two groups of people. Am I uh, more like Herod or am I more like the wise men in this scenario? And where we're going to jump in today um, is in Matthew, but... You know, like I said, their reactions are really different. So I just want to warn you guys, as we're studying this, as we're looking at this in Matthew, that their, their reactions to these interruptions are totally different. And you're going to have to make a decision at the end of today. How am I approaching interruptions? How am I going about seeing these things in my life that I would consider inconveniences? So it starts in Matthew 2. We're going to stump, jump right into this story. And so kids, if you're paying attention, like I'm used to kids. So kids, if you're paying attention, turn on those ears, be ready to listen, because i got some questions for you. And so Matthew 2, it goes on to say this. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Right? And it says, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? 
right? So they came to King Herod. You got to imagine this. They came to King Herod and said, hey, where is the king of the Jews? Or where is the king who has been born king of the Jews? You got to imagine as a king, I want you kids to answer this for me. If you were the king and somebody came up to you and said, okay, where's the king? Where's the new king at? You're going to be like, wait a second, there's another king here, right? And you got to imagine, he probably started getting offensive. He started probably taking this to heart that there was going to be another king. Why? Because this king was going to take his throne. This king was going to take his power, his position, he thought in his mind. He said, this can't happen. So they said, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. We've come to worship him. Not you, we've come to worship this new king. And that goes on to say, when Herod, the king heard this. He was troubled, just like we said, right? I'd be troubled too. He said he was troubled in all of Jerusalem with him. So not only was he troubled, but everybody else that had heard this. You got to imagine, how, like, especially in a smaller town, which Bethlehem was a smaller town, but, you know, news travels fast, especially when there's big news. It travels super duper fast. So there was start, gossip starting to happen, murmuring. And so all of Jerusalem in itself was disrupted by this news. Where's this king? Who's this king, right? And King Herod, he wasn't going to take it. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So he started asking questions. And he started getting down to the bottom of this. And, you know, they told him, they said, it's in Bethlehem, right? In Bethlehem of Judea. Goes on in the next verse. Here we go. <laughs> they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. They said, hey, this was written a long time ago. And I want you to remember this verse right here. They said it was written a long time ago that in Bethlehem of Judea, that it's going to happen. The prophet said this, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So they said, hey, listen. A prophet long ago said, there's going to be a baby come from Bethlehem, so it has to be there. And what do, you, what do you guys think he did next, right? Do you think he just took the news? No, he probably went, took it a step further. It even says, and Herod summoned the wise men back together, secretly ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. Like I said, he started asking questions, and he sent them actually on their way. He sent them on their way to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Herod said, hey, once you find this baby, let me know so I can come and worship him too. Kids, do you think King Herod was actually going to worship Jesus? No, it's right. They said no. They, he was probably going to plan on killing Jesus. He did not want this interruption in our lives. And so many times interruptions come into our lives. How fast do we try to remove them? Fast, right? When something is a thorn in our side, when something is trying to disrupt our lives, we try to rid that as fast as possible. And we could probably relate to King Herod, right? He viewed this as a threat. King Herod views this interruption as a threat, which a lot of us would. We could see that King Herod, his heart was not one of generosity, but it was one of what? Greed. He wanted all the power. He wanted all the authority. He wanted the position. He had what everybody else wanted. Why would he want to give that up? Well, let's jump over to the wise men. What was their reaction to it? And some of you guys may relate to this first part, but just hold on just a second. We're going to go and see what the wise men had to say. And it goes on in Matthew 2, 9 through 10. It says, After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house... And going into the house, they saw the baby, right? They saw the Mary, uh, Mary with the child, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Guys, this is two totally different reactions here. You guys see where there was a heart of greed from Herod, but how did the wise men react? For me... I think is, I'm actually going to skip this next verse ahead, Marcus. Can you go to the next slide? Their reactions were totally different. They didn't look at this as an inconvenience, right? In that last verse I just skipped, it said they went on their way, right? They were rejoicing, they were happy, and they, they heard from God that, they, that it was just going to get bad, and so they fled and went to a different way to their country. But we got to realize that they looked at this interruption as something totally different. It wasn't an inconvenience for them. 
Herod had a heart of greed during this time because he didn't want to give up his position. But the wise men, they had a heart of generosity. They had a heart. They were willing to give it all away. They were willing to give away all their power and go from the kingdom they knew and go to a new place in their lives. Right? There was a promise long ago that there was going to be a baby born out of Bethlehem, and they were willing to give it all up to go there. They were willing to go and, you know, with their heart of generosity, leave their family. you got to imagine, to travel this amount to see this baby, it took probably tons of time out of their lives, resources. They were on this journey that nobody else would probably even think about taking. But they did it out of generosity. That leaves the question, what about us? What would, obviously, what would we have done in this situation, right? How's our hearts compared to this? If you're sitting here thinking right now, I probably would be more like King Herod. I could say I've been like that too. I can relate to that. There's so many times in my life when I view interruptions as threats, right? And you probably do too. We all do. We all view interruptions as threats. There's times in my life when I don't want to give up. My wife may say, hey, I think this is best for you, and I don't want to give that up because I'm greedy, I'm selfish, we're human, right? But what is best? Because these, these threats oftentimes should be viewed as something else, though. So you're like, okay, well, what should we view them as if they're threats? We've already talked about invitations. We've already talked about blessings. But what if we started looking at these interruptions as something different? What if we looked at them as promises fulfilled by God? What if we looked at these interruptions as something more than just something trying to consume our life and take us down under? You see, Christmas is actually, if you think about it or not, Christmas is a promise fulfilled, right? Like we said long ago, the, the God, or the prophets, or t- God told the prophets that there was going to be a king one day, and he promised them for years there was going to be a king, a Messiah to come save you. There's going to be one that's greater than anybody else, and he's going to rule over all the Jews, over all of Israel, and he's going to come for you. You've got to imagine there was a time in the Old Testament you realize where God was not present, where God was nowhere. Imagine years without God. I can't imagine that. So you got to imagine the people probably got discouraged. They probably were like, what in the world? We were promised a king. When's he going to come? you got to realize this Christmas as we're celebrating, this promise has already been fulfilled, and it is being fulfilled right now. God promised there would be a king one day. God promised that there would be a Messiah to come back, and it has happened. So we have, you know, we could be celebrating about this at Christmas. You know, forget all the gifts and stuff. That's cool. But listen, you guys realize that the biggest promise ever came on Christmas Day, right? When Jesus was born. He goes in Isaiah 9, 6, it talks about it, right? This was actually, you know, part of what was told years ago. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Right? So this Christmas, I just want to extend that to you guys. How, you know, how are you looking at your interruptions? Are you looking at them as promises fulfilled? Or are you looking at them more as interruptions? Something that's sidetracking you, you know, and just, you know, when you say, they say, got hit by a bus, right? You do take it like that or you take it a step further and evaluate how you perceive it. Are you perceiving it with a kingdom perspective, right? You know, and God tells us this verse, and this is going to be harsh for a lot of people. This is going to hit home. But God tells us in Luke 9, 24, Jesus spoke this. He says, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. King Herod, he tried to save his life. He wanted to save his life. He wanted to save his position. He wanted to save everything he had. But in the end, what? He was going to lose it. And there's so many times where we want to hold on. There's interruptions that come into our life that disrupt everything. And we try to hold on so tight. And we want to just take, take a stand and stand for what's right and just take hold of our life by ourselves. But listen, God says, you need to give everything to me. If you try to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life, For me, you will save it. So how many of you all right now are in the position of Herod? That's not like a hand-raising question, but just asking yourself, because like I said, we can all relate. But you're probably thinking, well, how do I trust a God, right? How do I trust this God that we talk about every Sunday? How do I put my trust in him when I can't see him? You ask all these questions, and they're great questions, right? You have all these concerns, but I have one thing. We teach this in Upstreet. And all my Upstreet kids, if you were on the Upstreet hangout this week, you should be able to answer this. God always keeps his what? Promises. God always keeps his promises no matter what. And so we talked about this last week, and I love it. Kids, they grasp it. They love it. Listen, we can have hope because God keeps his promises. Have no fear. 
God is there for you. So today, as we end, you know, this service, as we end, you know, this sermon, this message, I want to extend it to you. Are you willing to lose everything for the sake of Christ? And if you have questions about that, if you're watching online and you have questions or concerns or, you know, you want to talk more about this message or anything we've been talking about this month, reach out to us. You could, Mr. Derek right here, he's up front. You know, he can stand by the door. You know, we could chat with somebody. Mr. Matt's around here somewhere. Speak with me. We would love to talk about how you can take that next step in your journey, whether that's choosing God, you know, Jesus to be the king of your heart, whether that's choosing baptism next, right? You need to uh, publicly proclaim, you know, that you are a follower of Jesus. That's next for you. Let us know. But just remember that God always keeps his promises, and sometimes the biggest interruptions in life aren't what they seem. So I'm going to pray. If you all have any questions, like I said, you can reach out to me, Pastor Derek, Matt, and we would love to chat with you. So God, God, thank you so much for today. Just thank you for everything you've given us. This time of Christmas, God, a lot of times we can get so caught up in the hustle and bustle, God. We, we get caught up with buying gifts, decorations, you know, all these family get-togethers, which are awesome, God. We love it. But let us remember the true reason for this season. God, let us remember that there was a, a promise you made to us years ago that you were going to send your son. You were going to send the king, God, and you fulfilled that. Let us remember that and rejoice that now we have Jesus here, God, with us. If there's anybody watching today, God, I pray that you would just put on their heart to step out of faith and say, God, I'm, I'm ready to just give it all to you. I'm ready not to try to, you know, own my throne. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to not be territorial anymore. I'm ready just to give everything up and go where you want, God. I pray you would just work in their lives and give them the boldness to step out. Lord, we love you and thank you for everything you've ever done for us and you've given us. Amen.